And now the final honoree of the evening. Yes, we are there. Let's take a look at the supremely talented, always lovely and effervescent David Letterman. Paul and I have uh, been doing this show 33 years, and uh, that's 6,028 shows. It works out to about eight minutes of laughter. <laughs> Guys, nuts. But when she Is she like, constantly interrupting? You are. Thanks for finally proving men can be funny. <laughs> he broke the window again. <laughs> Your extensive plastic surgery was a necessity and a mistake. <laughs> you know what Santa brought me? No. A carton of Lucky Strike cigarettes. The people who watch this show, uh, there's nothing I can do to ever repay you. Thank you for everything. You've given me everything. My fellow Americans, our long national nightmare is over. You are not, you are not funny. Our long national nightmare is over. Thanks for letting me take part in another hugely disappointing series finale. Our long national nightmare is over. Letterman is retired. Now here to present this very special award is the one and only Steve Martin. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, that's all right. Thank you. It is an honor to be here tonight to highlight the career of a television legend we all know and fear, David Letterman. Dave's TV show, Dance-a-thon. The Late Show. Sorry, The Late Show. Was on the air for 49 years. 33 years. 33 years. years. He began his career in the great state of Texas. Indiana. Indiana. Known worldwide for its soybeans. Corn. Corn. Dave started out as a wrestling coach. Weatherman. We weatherman in the great state of Texas. Indiana. Indiana. But soon packed up and moved to California, world famous for its soybeans. Citrus fruit, you moron. There he auditioned for Johnny Carson's Dance-a-thon. The Tonight Show. Tonight Show, where he appeared and was greeted by... Thunderous booing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I am so honored. Oh. Dave. Uh, Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, actually, I'm not done yet. Okay. I'm not done yet. Dave, not done yet, apparently. you were not just any a hole to get a late night TV show. You were the a hole to get Thank a late night TV show. And it's interesting to note that since Dave left TV, he has not shaved. He's waxed, but he has not shaved. Dave, could you just do us a favor and say, Dag Nabbit? Dag, Dag Nabbit? Good. You know, I think Dave looks like a guy who's at least once had to drink his own urine. Yeah. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to introduce this year's winner of an award, David Letterman. Here's your people. Thank you very much. Uh, See you later. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And um, I dozed off just a little bit. Is this still the 75th anniversary? <laughs> 
when, when Steve Martin, first of all, if you want to be in show business of any description, Steve Martin is who you ought to shoot for. This man, multifaceted, great talent. When he leaves the planet, he will leave behind a tremendous, wonderful, brilliant body of work. When I leave the planet, I will leave behind a body. <laughs> it's only May, but already Steve is featuring his midsummer tan. So pale is Steve. <laughs> when it was uh, announced that I would uh, be receiving this honor, I, I know there was a, a great deal of controversy. I know there was a great deal of bitterness. I know there was a great deal of discussion, and I understand why. Uh, we, we did 6,000 shows, and, and I would have to say, I'm not certain of this, but I think pretty much the most frequent guest featured on our show was George Foster Peabody. So I can understand. <laughs> and of course, he was great friends with the Cipriani. So it all... It, <laughs> I, um, I started on television when I was... Uh, uh, 1968, I was 20 when I got a job in television. And that happened because of the people at uh, Broad Ripple High School. And they had two, you could either study the advanced college preparatory studies, which I tried, uh, or you could take the general studies. Now, halfway through the advanced college preparatory studies, I flunked algebra. And they called me in one day and said, nah, we're going to shift you over to the general studies side of things. We think you'll be more comfortable there. I said, fine, what do I care? The general studies featured a public speaking class. And the first assignment in the public speaking class was an impromptu speech about yourself. This was great, no preparation whatsoever. I got up and I gave the speech. And for the first time in my life, I got an A. And this was the first time in my life that I had any academic success whatsoever. And it was because of that speech, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in broadcasting. And I was hired at Channel 13 in Indianapolis, Indiana, when I was 20 years old. And it's worked out pretty well. I'll tell you, if you want to uh, have something affect your self-esteem, retire. <laughs> and at first, of course, you must tire and then retire. <laughs> and uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I got very excited because the Obamas invited myself and my wife to a, a state dinner. And I said, oh my God, Regina, we've been invited to a state dinner. And she says, oh, I love steak. And I said, no, honey. <laughs> Am I the only one who noticed how pale Steve is? <laughs> so we go to the steak, uh, state dinner, and it's for the heads of the uh, Nordic states. And uh, President Obama was uh, giving remarks before he introduced the heads of state. And he was talking um, about how, how cooperative their union was, the Nordic states. Yes, they had differences, but by and large, they all felt and had the same beliefs. And, and they were good for mankind, and they believed in the right thing, and they were strong allies 
uh, for the United States. He said, the, the, he said but don't, don't misunderstand me. They do argue, they do have, he said, as a matter of fact, there is still an ongoing fight in the Nordic states about which country is happiest. <laughs> and then the prime minister of Iceland got up and he said, we are working on a defensive weapons system right now. And this gets everybody's attention. You think Iceland, really, working on a defensive weapons system? And he said, yes, volcanoes. <laughs> he said, we just haven't figured out how to aim them yet. <laughs> so I'm seated at dinner next to a man who was the uh, assistant chief of staff to the prime minister of Norway. And I'm feeling like a big shot. And we're chatting, and we're chatting, and we're chatting. And it comes about dessert time. And the guy says to me, excuse me, um, why, why are you here? And I said, well, you know what? I think I picked up somebody else's mail. And he said, so you're here by mistake? And I said, yeah. And he said, oh. So there you go. You get invited to the state dinner, nobody knows why. That's the sum total of being retired. The thing that I didn't get to say on our last uh, television show, uh, uh, I, I feel silly and awkward uh, being honored this way uh, because I, I, I'm really the least of it. Uh, we, we started 33 years ago. M many people were with me for 33 years. All I really did was put on a tie and I would come out and I would have makeup on and somebody would say something and then I would make a joke and, and often have to apologize for it. But, but the, the, the real reason for, if you call it success, it was certainly a long run, are the, are the people I worked with. And many of them uh, are, are here tonight and they have been with me and helped me and I wish I could name everybody that has supported me and they are the people who, by and large, don't get this recognition. Um, and I, I didn't have the time to thank them on my television show. Uh, so tonight, uh, I'm telling you the one thing that I've been thinking about since I was notified that the Peabody people had decided to give this to me. Uh, I am accepting this award on behalf of the hundreds and hundreds of men and women who have done the hard work and the heavy lifting to keep me on the air for 33 years, and I'll never, ever be able to repay you or thank you in a proper way. Thank you very much. Walter Cronkite, I was reading an article today, Walter Cronkite said of this award, he said, we count uh, our Emmys, uh, but we cherish uh, our Peabody's. Uh, and that's certainly true in my case. Um, and I, I, I wanna, before I go, I wanna thank my son, uh, Harry, who is here tonight and I'm wearing his belt. <laughs> and on the way over here, I kept saying, Daddy hopes Daddy doesn't bomb in front of Daddy's family. I said it four or five times. Daddy hopes Daddy doesn't bomb in front of Daddy's family. And finally, my son said, Daddy, for the love of God, stop referring to yourself in the third person. Thank you so much.